I figure we'll give folks uh, one more minute to show up and then we'll just start going through the agenda. So I think fun is here. So Matt, do you want to pull for other agenda items or shall we just start? Sorry, what? Um, I know Flynn's here. So do we want to just start going through the agenda items or? Uh, we have a lot on, on here, so we should probably just, just get going. Yeah. Okay. Flynn, do you want to update on LC and Alvin? Sure. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Excellent. So many of you would have seen the pull request that I submitted, I want to say a couple of weeks ago, about folding ambassadors authentication me mechanism into Envoy. There was a lot that PR has since been closed. Uh, after a lot of discussion, a lot of back and forth, the long and short of it could be summarized as there was a lot of interest in having a more flexible auth mechanism as part of Envoy's core. There was a lot of discussion about how best we could do that in light of both the Ambassador PR and the earlier Tigera work. And um, the end route forward there is going to be that uh, we'll be talking later today between myself and the Tigera folks about how to get the work done of folding ambassadors functionality and use cases into the existing filter from the Tigera folks, which I'm very happy with and thanks to all involved. Cool. Thank you for the update. Yep. I will, uh, one other thing, sorry, I'll be creating an issue against Envoy to track where we will track all the work going forward. Uh, that should happen a little bit later today and hopefully we'll be able to get this thing wrapped up pretty, just pretty shortly. Okay, great. Uh, Harvey, are you, you are on, do you wanna talk about the view and deprecation schedule? Sure, so I think, you know, we're heading into the 1.6 uh, release cycle right now, while the 1.6 release is actually happening in the next few weeks. Is that correct, Matt? Yeah, um, my plan is to kind of work on it this week and we'll burn down the remaining issues. So hopefully do it later this week or early next week. Okay. And so as most folks know, we have uh, the V2 APIs now. They've been production ready since Envoy 1.5, which was last December. The plan is to um, turn down the V1 APIs. Uh, we understand that there is quite a lot of uh, dependence uh, that folks have on the V1 APIs. That there are various uh, management stacks and integrations that are based around the one V1 APIs. So we're not um, deprecating these as aggressively as we are other features in Envoy. Uh, the plan of record, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, folks, is to not deprecate them in the 1.6 release cycle. So it'll be 1.7 at which we announce that they're deprecated in three months' time. Um, and the way we have uh, things working with our breaking change policy is that we then have another three months, essentially, of them being uh, enabled at the beginning of the 1.8 release cycle. Uh, we will actually remove that functionality. So that essentially gives us um, nine months, right? Yeah, so I, I think I, I, it's right. nine months, yeah. It'll be, it'll be nine months until there is a release in which the V1 uh, code yes. is completely removed, but it will be removed at the beginning of the 1.9 cycle, uh, which That's will be correct. approximately six months. Um, one, one other piece is, so we, we will document this entire policy and we'll get this sent out and it'll be on the website and we'll send it to Envoy announce. Um, the other thing that we're likely to do is that in Envoy 1.8, so that means the beginning of the 1.7 release cycle in approximately three months, 
um, we will flip. So there's a flag right now. There's a command line flag, which uh, it's basically tells Envoy to only use V2. Uh, so it's helpful for debugging because right now Envoy will attempt to parse uh, config as V2, then it'll fall back to V1. What we will do at the beginning of the 1.8 cycle. So in about three months, we're going to switch that flag to default to true. So basically, by default, Envoy will attempt to parse V2 only. So people will have so people will have to explicitly put in false for that, uh, and we'll probably put in some type of warning also, which basically says that in three months' time, you know, this code is basically go going to be removed. Um, so that will hopefully help people understand that they that they basically need to upgrade. Uh, yeah. yeah, we we strongly recommend that folks don't write any new v1 integrations and start moving to v2 i mean there are other advantages than just having uh not you know your api disappear from underneath you um specifically like most new features are going into the v2 apis already and probably after the next release cycle we'll start pushing back pretty hard on any uh additions to v1 so it really is a feature freeze uh, state then yeah so uh, starting basically next week, we, we will be pushing back very hard um, as once Envoy 1.7 is released in about three months, we will we will not allow any any further V1 features. So it will be completely frozen. Um, so again, the the kind of TLDR of this is that, you know, if you're running if you're running actual version releases, you have nine months. Um, if you're running master, you have about six months. Cool. I think that's uh, now, yeah, I mean, now now would be a good time to speak up if, if anyone sees a particular problem with this. Yeah, if there's also any blocking bugs causing you to not be able to move to V2, let us know and we will be aggressive about fixing them. Yeah, um, and we will also send an announcement uh, about this to Envoy Announce. Cool, I think that's that agenda item. Cool. What's, what's next? Uh, sorry, I'm looking what's next on the agenda. Repo reorg. Oh, okay. Um, let me cover this one really briefly. So there's a GitHub issue that I opened um, before I went on paternity leave. And the, the kind of idea behind this issue is that, you know, at this point we have a whole bunch of different extension possibilities within Envoy. We have uh, different kinds of filters. We have network, HTTP, we have listener filters, we have uh, stat syncs, we have tracers, we'll probably have health checkers in the future. Uh, and right now the extensions are kind of sprinkled all over the, the repo. Uh, and that has a couple of different downsides. The first downside is that it's hard for people to actually look at the extensions, understand what there is and actually learn from them. Um, the second problem is as we're growing this project, you know, we have an increasing number of PRs, there's an increasing burden on maintainers, and we'd like to get to a world in which we can have, you know, specific code owners files for specific extensions. So actually start extending, you know, that the fact that there may be people that own certain portions of the code that are not core actual maintainers. So um, we're proposing a repo reorg, and what's in that PR is not completely up, up to date. Um, but the idea is to kind of move to a model that's a little more like Linux kernel in the sense that Linux kernel has like the core code and then there's a set of drivers. So what we'll essentially do is we'll try to move all of the extensions over to a specific directory structure called extensions. Uh, and then we'll break those down very clearly in terms of what extension types they are. Uh, and again, that will allow us to more easily understand what's there. It'll have code owners. And also uh, it's gonna allow us in the future to actually, again, kind of like Linux kernel, we'll be able to have compile flags, probably for Bazel to compile in and out different filters. So that people that wanna either from a security footprint perspective, don't wanna install certain filters or, you know, low, low, um, like low memory footprint devices. They don't wanna install Lua or something like that. We can basically compile that out. So um, I, I'm going to go and update that issue uh, from a final proposal based on in-person discussions with, with Harvey that happened about a month ago. Uh, so watch that issue if you're interested. And then uh, assuming that there's no major objections, once we release 1.6, 
I'm probably going to start doing the work to kind of slowly move different filters over. And, you know, there, there's going to be a learning process during this in terms of, you know, what code is still kind of shared and like, do we need other extension points, for example, to get all of the code out of common. So like one example is right now we support Redis health checking. Um, so until health checking itself is pluggable, we can't take the Redis code entirely out of core. So, you know, there's going to be some to do's that actually come from this from things that, you know, that will need to make extensible to actually get that code out. Um, but yeah, so we will update that this week and, and definitely speak up or uh, ping that issue if there's any thoughts there. Yeah, there's, there's one related thing to that, and that's, um, I know uh, the user DO, DIO um, was looking at extending Envoy filter example with some uh, you know, yep. different types of filters, and the idea there was to have that reflect the new organization. I'm actually wondering whether we actually want to think about reorganizing Envoy filter example and actually moving in maybe into the main repo, some of these educational pieces, and yep. stripping that down to the bare minimum necessary to show people how to just do the build and link. Because that, I mean, we, we've always had historically issues with, you know, bit rot and maintaining version. Yeah. Yeah, I would be in favor of just getting getting rid of Envoy filter example and, and basically having example filters that that don't necessarily yeah. compile by by default. Um, that, I mean, it, it would be useful, I think, to retain that repository just to show how you do the build and link stuff. I mean, there's there's some non trivial things there, which would be that's true. Yeah, you know, one like one topic that, that we probably won't have time for um, this week, but we should put on the agenda for two weeks from now. And I, I will open an issue on this is I think at this point we have a general need for GitHub bots that do like 17 different things. And like you can imagine that like we should be having a bot that whenever Envoy master changes, it automatically commits the SHA update into Envoy filter example, and then basically tells us if it actually breaks. So, you know, there's things that I think that we can do to help us with that bit rot. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, so why don't we, why don't we go ahead and I, I will take the action to at least open an issue on like what we want from bots. Um, and, and bots are actually a, a great thing for people out there who don't necessarily want to write C++, but like want to help um, that, that we could get them to help with, with, with bots. Okay, um, does, does it, anyone have any thoughts or questions on the repo reorg? Sounds like a good idea. Great. Okay. Uh, next agenda item is um, just incremental XDS. So this is actually just a public service announcement or sort of a, a request for sort of interest um, from folks. Uh, so Nicola, who is a Googler and myself, um, are working on a proposal for incremental XDS right now. And we would like to speak to anyone who's interested. We'll have a public doc most likely uh, later uh, this week or early next week. And but we would definitely like to loop into the conversation early rather than later, everyone who's interested in this topic. So the idea is um, already Nicola has a sort of um, a work in progress PR for lazy loading where you can uh, fetch uh, additional resources such as clusters dynamically based on incoming requests. The idea here would be to see if we can actually unify that with um, the core sort of XDS protocol and support incremental updates along the way, which were something which were also on the roadmap for XDS later down uh, the, the track. But it seems there's an interesting confluence that might be possible here. So please reach out to either myself, um, Matt or Nicola on uh, Slack and uh, we can uh, loop you in the conversation if interested. And then I think the last item is Chris. Yeah, I was just curious, uh, you know, with the audit that we did with <clears throat> Cure 53 in terms of our thoughts of just publishing and linking it off of the yeah, Envoy let's, every just, let's just publish it. I, I don't I don't see any reason yeah. not to unless there's other objections. Yeah, I've started to actually turn some of those issue those uh, like the 
the various bugs that they categorize into actual issues. Okay. The only one I've done so far has been the high priority one they flagged, which was the CSRF. Um, I can do the manual grind and just turn the rest into distinct issues and we should also publish the PDF and that sounds okay. good. Yeah, I, I put up a PR for, the, for, for Doc for the admin security thing. Uh, it, with a big warning there. So if people could take a look at that, uh, we can just yeah. get, get that published. Um, I, I, I think it's fairly obvious, but that yep. that wording should make it even more obvious. Cool. I, I could do the PR to link the PDF, so. Okay, great. Cool. That's it for my end. Cool. Anyone out there have any things that they'd like to discuss? I actually had one other thing that uh, that came to mind while you guys were talking about the deprecation of the V1 APIs. We just filed an issue where we're seeing connections dropping when we do hot restarting. Um, and on the one hand, it would be kind of interesting if anybody has a cycle or two to take a look at that. Um, but on the other hand, it occurred to me to wonder, as the V1 config goes away, then is hot restart also going away? Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, there, there are people I, I think that will continue to use it, like particularly people that don't use LDS. Um, so I, I think the hot restart will be there basically forever. Cool. <clears throat> um, yeah, for, for your particular issue, I was, I was going to ask you some follow-up questions in, in GitHub later today. Yeah, sounds good. And I'm always on Slack too. So. Okay, great. Cool. Thanks. Um, I, I guess one, one other question for me um, for the group as we're starting to talk about releases. Um, do, do, do people think that we need to start doing release candidates or is, is the, is the, is the procedure that we're doing now, is it okay? Like from my perspective, I'd rather not do release candidates unless there's a very good reason for it. Um, you know, we're quite, we've kind of taken um, the, the general approach that we're always at release candidate quality on, on master. So is that still okay with people or is that going to become problematic? Works for us. I yeah, know it I works think for we you. Explicitly <laughs> adopt the policy of uh, release candidate, you know, uh, master is always release candidate quality, quality and uh, run with that. Okay, sounds good. One more thing that I want to raise, which is while most pieces of hey, sorry, sure, it's very hard to hear. I mean, there was one another thing that I actually wanted to ask, which is while most pieces of the configuration has become dynamic, the only thing that remains the breaking configuration, which is the placing configuration is still like practically specified, especially the, uh, I mean, uh, some of the, the collector references and... Hey, hey, sorry, you're, you're like totally breaking up. Oh, no, man, I, I type on Slack. You can type it out. Yeah, do you, do you want to just type it in, in the chat thing? Yeah. So, so for for any for any config, um, you know that people would like to be dynamic. Um, I I I think that's totally reasonable. It just has to get resourced, and someone has to work on it. So, I I mean my my general feeling is that you know there's certain config options that really don't realistically change. Like once Bootstrap is actually written out. Uh, and making them fully dynamic is probably going to be a, a substantial amount of work. It's not that it can't be done. 
Um, but what, what I recommend is just for things that, you know, people would like to see dynamic, let's just get issues opened and then we can, we can discuss there. Eck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Cool. Well, happy to be back. All right. See ya. Welcome oh, back. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> yeah.